So this June was my 40th anniversary of being involved in the co-op, which amazes me that this is what I've done with my artistic life. I've been a part of this organization and loved every minute of it. It enabled me to become an artist in Boulder because I could experiment here with different media, different imagery, and I had control of putting it on the walls and I believe it's a cornerstone of our artistic community in Boulder. One of the luckiest things that happened to me was having the privilege of doing eight Boulder Boulder race posters. The people who were working on the poster that year in 1988 happened by the co-op, happened to like my work, and they said, would you be interested in working on a poster for the Boulder Boulder race? Well, of course. I've done the 10th, 20th, 30th, and 40th, plus some in between. The most recent poster I did, which was 2018, and that has a little tiny portrait of Frank Shorter in his vintage 1978 running clothes going through the finish line. Only I put him on a trail in Boulder, and actually there's a ghost finish line right over his head. You have to look very carefully, and that's the vintage finish line from 19. 78. So that was a lot of fun to do too, and I have hopes of doing the, the 50th. I had this vision of taking trees and running them through the seasons, and I needed a kind of a landscape. I thought, well, what can I use for inspiration? I take lots of photographs and have a big catalog of those, and I'm thinking, what one has a row of trees? And I remembered one Easter morning. It was sunny and beautiful, and I remembered seeing crab apple trees all across, like a, a, with a little white fence in front of them. And at the time that I saw them, I screeched to the side of the road. And to my mother's horror, I got out of the car and went right into the middle of the four-lane highway and took the photo I needed. Um, so I've done that several times, taking the photo I needed in the middle of the road. And I had a great time looking up flowers and thinking about what flowers go along. Here's your first pask flowers of the spring and they melt into the lupins and the poppies and the daisies and into finally the fireweed, the curly dock and just the dried weeds at the end. So another one that's a favorite is I was camping in the 4th of July area, past Eldora, and I was following the stream and I did a, turned around a bend and saw these Perry's primroses. Those happened to be the first Perry's primroses I had ever seen. And they were fluorescent pink. So to get the exact view I wanted, I'm on my stomach in the weeds getting this picture of Perry's primrose. And I believe that was really a fun painting and I knew it was going to come out just because <laughs> of the uh, inspiration for it. The way I seem to paint is very detailed. My paintings actually unfold from one corner, it's all done, and it unrolls like a scroll as I paint it. And it's, this is finished, I keep going with this. I paint a little spot, it's finished. I paint the next spot, it's finished. I paint the tree trunk. So, it's just the way my painting has morphed over the years, and it's very detailed, and I love to pull in color. If you use a color once, like say there is the pink red here, you want to use it in at least two other places, and it can even be the size of your fingernail. It doesn't have to be another big area of red, but sure enough, there's a little red here, a little red in that tree, and of course, the pink of the sky. I have a vanishing series that I have done, which is I paint a painting, leaving space in it for something like wagon trains or horses. And I put in it things from the past that may have been in that landscape, like a house disappearing. And I put the campers and the settlers and the wagon trains in it, they're all vanishing. I paint every little wagon train and every little steer that pulled it. and. I scan that in over the original painting, and then I can just slide a little fading, and it gets see-through. And to me, that's my take on history. I always love walking down streets and thinking, hmm, who lived in this house? Who built this house? Who, um, 
who was here camping first? And I imagined things and I put them in these types of paintings. The most memorable parts of my career are when somebody says to me or emails me or sends me a, a note card saying that every morning when I get up, I see your painting in my breakfast nook and it starts my day off on the right foot. To me, that's why I paint, exactly why I paint.